Well, you know, a lot of people know that what makes police... Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. I'm ready to get into this story quickly. And you can tell, because this story got me in jail. This whole situation around this particular time, um, I believe, is a reason that uh, a few of us were put in jail because of our activism and, and what was involved with Frank Jew. So what I'm trying to say with this here is um, a lot of people always want to talk about, you know, when you know the police officers and community policing, and that seems to work really well in most diverse neighborhoods. And so nothing can... And what, what, what's great about a lot of suburban uh, departments or a lot of uh, departments in uh, Caucasian neighborhoods is they have, you know, they, they can relate to the constituents, right? Okay. So, but what happens is when you come to a city like Milwaukee, what feels good to them is having a lot of white overseers to, I guess, keep control over the natives, okay? It's like that kind of feel, and you know, and this is just what it is, okay? And that's why you had the situation with uh, Dahmer and why he was able to do that. But I'm going to tell y'all something that happened like 12 years after Dahmer, which, like I said, landed a lot of us in jail, and um, which I believe was the catalyst Okay, let me just put it like that. Was the catalyst? Um, there was a young man by the name of uh, Frank Jew, and his father, his his uh, uncle, was held a principal at uh, my high school. But uh, and Frank was biracial. Okay, but of course he. Is considered a black man because white supremacy see color and see black. You don't look white, you must be black. Okay, <laughs> even if you have a white mother, you might have a black more of a, a black phenotype. Up, uh, don't care. You're a black man. Anyway, Frank Jew, and sometimes so some people call him Frankie Lee. He was a uh, a Wisconsin man who was severely, severely, y'all, beaten by off-duty Milwaukee police officers in the early morning of 20, uh, October 24, 2024. Following a state trial that ended with the jury acquitting the three white police officers charged, we protested, we tore this damn thing. I mean, it was no justice, no peace. And to a federal investigation plea, it led to a plea agreement with the three officers, which was crazy because they should have just went straight to jail. And it led to plea agreements with three officers and the indictment of five police officers, including the three who were acquitted in state court. So y'all hear what I'm saying? This racist-ass place... And the jury that was picked was the all-white jury. Exonerated these fucking officers. Just like y'all want me to do when I think about Officer Balterzak and his freaking weak-ass partner. Okay? So, because I'm getting fired up now when I'm thinking about this right here. Okay? Because this is another thing that I got to get off my chest. It's good therapy. Fuck me. Okay? Now, the federal jury acquitted one of the remaining police officers, and the three officers who were acquitted in state court were convicted in federal court. Just remember that now. The case was the biggest against the Milwaukee Police Department in 25 years. So in a sense, it was bigger than Jeffrey Dahmer, okay, in terms of police negligence and police misconduct. That's why I said this shit is a culture. And we had Arthur Jones, who was homegrown 
Uh, everybody in the community knew him. He was our police chief. Crime went down. Uh, quality of life issues were um, put on forefront, and you were made to adhere. You wasn't going to park out in the middle of the street and start talking to your friend where everybody in the neighborhood got to go around you. I mean, they would pull up. I mean, all these quality of life issues, he started with that, and it started to be a trickle-down effect, okay? You can tell what somebody cared. Well, he was from Milwaukee. All right, he's since moved on, and I think he's in Atlanta right now, but it doesn't matter. Here's the story. Um, they they pretty much, because, the, the, of course, the uh, mayor appoints the police chief, and they, uh, police chief didn't give have him, I mean, the mayor didn't have any more confidence, didn't give him his vote of confidence anymore because, which is Mayor Norquist, who went over to Chicago, I'm going to tell you how this good old white boy network works. He was pretty much sexually harassing and assaulting a Puerto Rican woman. Okay, and I wish I could, you know, uh, well, hell, it's all public record. So he was having an affair, having sex, even though he was married with this a Puerto Rican woman. Can't think of her name right now. And she wanted to stop and he wouldn't let her stop. Okay? She didn't want to do it in the first place. But she felt powerless. She worked under him. And so he wanted Chief Jones to cover for his shit. And wanted Chief Jones to get him. And Chief Jones was like, no, you got the wrong one, dude. You know, I, I, I ain't the one. So they just, he made sure he didn't give him the vote of confidence no more. And the people in Milwaukee didn't have confidence of, of, of Mayor Norquist anymore. We didn't want his ass after we knew what he had did. Figueroa is her last name. Okay? This is the kind of crazy political shit that go on when, when in these quite, it, the system, the systemic racism. Okay? And when you, and this is why the, the, the certain groups are hold, trying to hold on to power so much because they want to keep this shit going. See, it's, it's good pickings. I mean, you, you know, I mean, but like I said, it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Okay? But the fact of the matter is, I'm going to go back to this story. So they got rid of Chief Arthur Jones. Right after he was gone, on the evening, or right, actually, it might have been around the same time. He was—he might have been still um, chief at this time. They was just getting ready to get him out because you have to, you know, do it at the end of your your tenure, I guess. Yes. So on the evening of October twenty-fourth, Frank June and his friend Lavelle Harris, okay, they both was black. Well, no, Lavelle Harris is black. Jude is biracial were invited to Kristen Antonison and Katie Brown with them to a housewarming party hosted by Officer Springler at his Bayview, Milwaukee home. Okay? Many of the persons at the party, all of them basically, were off-duty Milwaukee policemen. Upon arriving at Springler's home, Jude and Harris told Tonison that they felt uncomfortable. Because, of course, just like in the Jeffrey Dahmer case, this guy came behind and just locked the doors. Like, and then it gave him a look. Everybody looked up like, you brought some blacks to my house? Because <clears throat> Tony Sid and Brown was invited to this party. They decided, okay, we'll go up to the party. We'll bring our uh, dates, I guess, they black friends with them. Two guys, two girls. Oh, Lord. They shouldn't have went to that party. So, uh, the, the, the group, I mean, uh, Jude and Harris told them quick. They felt uncomfortable and let's get, the, I, we, we want to leave. The group quickly left and shortly after doing so, Spengler reported that his wallet 
which contained his police badge, was missing. Now, these guys didn't go nowhere. They didn't ask to use the bathroom. They didn't do anything. But these punk-ass drunk officers need a reason to start their mayhem. Like, they like to, you know, work in packs to beat and, and, and abuse people. So the catalyst was going to be, oh, they stole my, my badge is missing. So at least 10 men who were at Springer's home went outside because Jude and, and Harris was getting in the car with uh, Tonison and, and uh, uh, you know, Brown. And all of a sudden, among the off-duty officers who confronted the group were Andrew Springer, John Bartlett, and Daniel Mazzari, Ryan Packard, Ryan Lemke, John Clossy, and Joseph Stroman. Okay, those are the officers. Off-duty officers identified themselves as police officers and focused their attention upon Jude and Harris, demanding to know where the badge was. This is E. Michael McCann's last case as district attorney. That's what I believe. I believe he gave this case to uh, Chisholm. Okay, that's what I believe happened during this time. I don't want to get off because they're all dirty players. And y'all saw McCann come out of retirement so he could be get the spotlight to uh, prosecute uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay? They just want the spotlight. These, these are all money-hungry, freaking... Uh, yeah, mm -mm. Okay. So anyway, they start demanding to know where the badge was. So both of these guys denied taking the badge because they they just came in, saw all these white dudes looking at them crazy who were drunk. And I guess they were like, why would y'all bring me here? But see, white girls, these white girls brought them there and they were like, Cause, because they were invited and they thought it was cool because the guy, one of the cops probably said, you know, hey, we have a party, blah, blah, blah. Y'all come on through. But they came through with their friends. All of a sudden, the mob threatened them saying, nigger, we can kill you, nigger. During the confrontation, Ryan Packard took Jude to the ground, where other off-duty officers held him down, searched for him the badge. Now, they know he didn't have no badge, y'all. Remember this. The off-duty officers demanded that Jude tell them where the badge was. While doing so, they repeatedly was punching him and kicking him. Another officer, John Clausen, cut Harris's face with a knife. That's his friend, remember? And Harris just broke loose. He freed himself and he ran away. And matter of fact, he kept on running until he uh, got somebody to take him out of town. I think he went to um, New Orleans somewhere. Okay? Because... He realized he was getting a hell beat out of him by off, drunk, off-duty Milwaukee police officers. Now, I want you to hear this. Kristen, her, they, the friends, and that's why I really don't believe that a lot of people say, oh, I believe those white chicks set them up. They didn't. They were some white girls that liked them. I mean, so some of y'all who, you know, never grew up with white friends, you know, your minds are kind of narrow. You know, but if you grew up in a mixed community and you really had white friends or whatever that you felt, some of them are okie doke like that. Come on, let's go to the party. They're not thinking that they so racist that these dudes are going to do this shit. And who in a right mind would think that they would? Somebody, this will happen to somebody you brought to somebody's house. Knowing that these guys didn't even walk to even sit down. Okay, they didn't even sit down. That's how uncomfortable once they got in and they came in and started looking around and everybody was giving them the death stare. They was like, look, we want to get the fuck we we want to get the fuck out of here. Okay. Now, Chris uh Kristen called 911 and reported that the people who were claiming to be police officers were beating up her friend. Now remember the same thing. Remember, remember Glenda Cleveland. Okay, now while talking to the nine one one dispatcher, Antonison reported that a uniformed officer had responded to the scene, and that he began kicking his ass, uh, Frank Jude, up 
uh, two, he began beating and kicking him in the head. Now, this guy is out in the middle of the uh, sidewalk in the street being beaten in this uh, Bayview neighborhood. This on-duty officer, Joseph Sh Shabel, arrived at the scene upon learning that Jude was suspected of stealing a, a, a police badge repeatedly stomped the suspect head until others could hear bones breaking while his partner, Nicole Martinez, watched. That was the brown officer. See? So uh, people ask me about the black and brown coalition. I, I don't think there is one. Nicole watched. They heard bones breaking. This is this, and the blue wall of silence was just too much. Now, other officers grabbed the phone from An Antonison and threw her up against the truck, dented it. That's how hard they threw her up there. Brown also made, and that's her friend, the other white girl, also made two phone calls to 911 before they took her phone. Apologizing to Martinez, Masaryk lifted Jude off the ground, kicked him in the crotch. Then Bartlett took Shabel's pen and shoved it into both of Jude's ear camp canals, causing Jude to scream and squirm in an extreme pain. Oh God! And resulting in significant injury. The police were actually operating y'all out there like a goddamn mob. Do you understand what I'm saying to y'all? And you want me to think it was an accident what happened to Connor Rex and some phone? You're talking to the wrong one. Okay? Well, I, and I don't want to talk to we'll tell y'all about what they did to my godmother's son. His name was Daniel Bell. They killed him and planted a knife in his hand. And the only reason we got justice in that case is because Daniel was left-handed. So don't tell me about this low-down police culture and what happens. And the good officers, the ones that my brother was an officer for the city of Milwaukee. He left. He went to another department because the corruption in Milwaukee was just too bad. I mean, really. And a lot of times we take these jobs because we really want to make a difference in our community. Nowadays, they lock you up because if you got a record, you can't be of any kind of service. So the point of the matter is, if Martinez, the, the female Puerto Rican, oh, Mexican officer, got there to change things, maybe she was afraid to leave. Maybe she... This right here is nothing, no police work or uh, police. But so it's going to show you it's the culture. Because I'm sure she was shocked when she uh, saw both of the pins shoved into Frank Jude's ear canals. Now, the mob broke two of Jude's fingers by bending them back until they snapped. All this is going on in the neighborhood. They bent his fingers back until they snapped. Officer Sprangler put a gun to Jude's head, threatened to kill him several times, additionally during the incident. And then Bartlett used a knife to cut off Jude's leather jacket and pants, leaving him naked in the street. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? This is what they did to an innocent black man. Because he came to them. These are police officers. Drunk. Okay. Oh, but I know some of y'all don't want to see that. Because they're all white. This is the kind of shit we sick and tired of. Okay. Jude was initially arrested on suspicion of theft. And quickly loaded into the police van. And transported to the hospital. For his numerous injuries. The admitting physician took photographs because there were so many injuries to the uh, to document. The jury, the injury to Jews' ears were so severe 
that the emergency room physicians could not diagnose it immediately because they couldn't control the bleeding, y'all. They couldn't control the bleeding. See, there's an element of white narcissism or white uh, uh, um, behavior, pathology, that are blood shedders. They love the blood. They love to uh, uh, torture people like that. That's the kind of mob that used to get together after Sunday and go lynching, you know, go out lynching black people from after they get out of church. Take their kids. See, so this is this behavior is this lynch mob uh beating black people, this is no um secret, I man, or this is nothing that's has don't have a long history. Okay? Now, check this out. They took the knife. They dug it up in his butt. That knife that he used to cut off his leather jacket and pants, they jugged it up his ass. Okay, why? I don't know because there's a fascination with doing shit to people's ass. Homoerotica. Okay? Now, he was initially arrested on suspicion of theft. No one was ever charged with theft of the badge, and the badge was never found because they tell a damn lie. Nobody stole no damn badge. Now, on March 27, 2006, now, oh, 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 let me, let me don't forget this part because uh, the investigation that followed was met with the code of silence on the part of the Milwaukee police officers that were involved. An internal police investigation resulted in terminal in a termination of nine officers, suspension of three, and a demotion of one. That's, okay? Remember what they did to Frank, though. The district attorney's office faced mounting criticism at the pace of the investigation, led in part by Alderman Michael McGee, who, at a rally calling for criminal charges, referred to the suspected officers as hate mongers and KKK killers and said that any man that will pull another man's pants down, stick items up their ass, is a straight-up sick faggot. Now, excuse my language, but that's what Mike said. Now, all the, because, because we were furious. I roll, and I roll with Michael, okay? So, <clears throat> let me say one thing about this, too. Before uh, the whole public found out about it, the city of Milwaukee and the police department and all of them kept the shit secret. I think for about three or four months. And I think it was the news that told them because don't forget the news get the scanner they get they get a lowdown to all this stuff right, but everybody held on to the information, and all of a sudden the the press is the one that told them if y'all don't come up with a story and say something about what happened to this guy Frank Jude, then we're gonna uncover the whole story. Okay, these are some of the uh, little tidbits that happened in the interim. Okay? Now, well, I know this is a long video. I'm going to make this in two parts. 